So the first fader that we'll go through is communication style. It goes from verbal in one end to physical in the other end. And verbal, of course, means what I'm doing now, I'm talking. And in the physical end, that basically is everything else. So, um, if the fader is at max, the verbal end, you get very clear communication. We are very good uh, human beings at understanding what we're saying to each other. If we, of course, understand the same language as Eric went through earlier. Uh, and this is very clear and we can ask questions if there's stuff we do not understand. It's very easy to sort of get a back and forth communication going. This is often what uh, is used in like traditional Dungeons and Dragons role playing. You say my character uh, gets on the horse and we ride towards the dungeon to slay the dragon and then everybody agrees that that is what's happening. That's verbal uh, communication. There's very few misunderstandings uh, and of course it's very limited if you only have your voice to c communicate with. And especially it limits the emotional engagement. So um, if the only thing we can do is talk, we, when we as human beings communicate normally, we use our bodies a lot, we read each other's faces. Uh, we, we are very good at sort of reading and interpreting face muscles and the way we move our face and even if we change just a tiny little bit of how we smile and so on we get instant reactions from people around us so uh, that gives way more room for emotional connection if we can use our bodies in the other end uh, physical of course you'll get that emotional connection if you can move around you can touch and so on uh, and it's way more playful we tend to be way more playful in if we just discuss it. When we talk, we're very much using the sort of intellectual part of our body and only the head. And when we're down in the body, it, it changes everything and we feel emotions way more strongly uh, and we get a, a more positive and engaging response. Uh, in the mid of the fader uh, is probably where most laps are. Um, it's the way most of us communicate. We shake hands, we give hugs, uh, we articulate with our hands and so on when we talk. So that's where we normally are and we read all those signals and get that into the thing. But very interesting stuff happens if you move the fader to one end or the other and have great, uh, there's of course consequences, but, but it's very great to sort of when you design something to sort of move the slider up and down and okay, what happens if we remove uh, the way we communicate or make the language way more simple than we talk now. So we maybe only can talk in the present tense or maybe only talk about stuff that's within this room. I cannot say that out on the porch there's a, be there's a beautiful tree out on the lawn. Then I have to take uh, Charles and drag him outside and say, look, tree. That changes the way that uh, a lab would be. Um, you, later in the week when you play White Death, you'll see many beautiful ways of doing a more physical game. Nina has made uh, a White Death that explores these things about how can you communicate without just being up here, but also in the body. And it's a very strong experience. Um, yes, what do you want to achieve by focusing on physical or verbal communication in your lab? I think I already went through some of the questions that you can ask yourself and what are the consequences about this. And it of course changes from what type of lab you're doing, what happens when you move this fader. Uh, but it, it basically goes from how much emotional engagement would you like uh, in your lab. The more physical, if, if you remove the physical, then you remove the emotional engagement. And it becomes very intellectual, which can be very interesting, but, but it, it depends on what you want to achieve with this, uh, with your lab. And that was the first fader. Thank you.